Hi, George here. And today we'll be taking a look at editing a JPEG file using the Camera Raw Editor here inside of Photoshop Elements. And we'll be doing that using the presets. And I want to take just a second here to thank Rich. Thanks, Rich, for reminding me about the presets. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. First, we need to close this down. There we go, get that out of the way. Go up to File, come down to Open in Camera Raw, and you can use this to open up raw files or any other file you want. It works with any of the image files. Open this up, and the one I want is way down below here. There we go. We're now inside of the Camera Raw Editor, and as you can see, it is a separate program from Photoshop Elements, which is in the background back there. And if you want to get this into Elements, you have to come down here where it says Open. That saves your settings here, and then converts the file over to a Photoshop Elements file, and it then opens it up over in Photoshop Elements. But right now we're going to be taking a look at editing it in here. I already did a video all about how to use all these settings over here, right hand side, basic, detail, calibration, all this basic stuff in here. A couple of things I want to show real fast though. I'm just do a little bit of adjustments here and edit in or adjust the blacks just a bit. That's bring some whites in here a little bit more, a little bit of shadows. There we go. One thing I want to show, there's no real obvious button in here for resetting. I would imagine they should have a button up here, a little reset button, but they don't. And it's hidden over here. Three dots, click on that, and reset to default right there. And that puts all those settings back to the original settings. So that's where you'll find that reset button if you need it. Three dots right there. Okay, let's now take a look at the profiles or presets that you can use. There up here it says profile, and you have color, and you have monochrome, or you have browse. You can also get to browse with this button right here. Same thing. So I'll click on the button and it opens up the presets in here for the profiles. There's a favorite section. You can actually mark anything in here as a favorite. Right now I have just the color and the monochrome up here. Now to use the preset, you roll over it and you can see what it looks like and then click on it and it sets those settings into your image. This is just that same color and monochrome right down here. That's all that is. Come down to artistic, click on that arrow right here opens up the artistic. Now there are a few in here, there are eight. And if you roll over them, as you can see here, you get to see what it is. Now an easy way to do this, to really be able to compare, is to roll off and back on. So if you're on the left-hand side here, roll off to the left and then on. You can go like that and you can compare how it looks before and after. That easy. Right down here again, off and on, that way. If you're on the right-hand side, then roll off and on to the right, does the exact same thing. If you're off of it, you're seeing the original. If you're on, you're seeing that preset. Now, I wish that these had better names in here. This is just Artistic 1, Artistic 2, and so forth. They don't really tell you anything. I wish they had better names. Like This is obviously more magenta in there. It would be nice to be able to have the name give you a bit of a hint as to what it actually is. Let's say I wanted to keep this one. It has a bit more of a sepia tone to it. Let's say I wanted to keep this as a favorite. Just click on that star right here. That adds it to the favorites. And you can see it up here. Now we have that in our favorite set, three and also five. So we've added in two more presets. If you want to remove a preset, just uncheck that star. This one over here moved to this position. So it looked like I clicked here and I lost that one. In reality, I clicked here, this went away, then the one over here moved over to this position. A little confusing, but that's the way it works. I'll just go on down here to the black and white. There's a very large selection of black and whites in here. As you can see, a whole bunch of these. Now these actually have at the bottom some better names. Here's a blue filter, here's a green filter, orange filter, and a yellow filter. Again, the best way to use these though is just to come outside here and then go into it and back and forth to compare and see what the look is. Most of these are not great. Depends upon the colors in the image. You'll find some that work better than others. I tend to like contrastier looking images. It's just a personal preference of mine. That's not too bad right here, the green filter. If you want to compare between the two, just roll up and down like that. There's the green, here's the orange. Orange brings out more of her face, as you can see there, but you lose some of the modeling on the face. Okay, let's check out the modern. I like to close the, each one of these sections down before moving on to the next. It's just a bit more controllable that way. There we go, here's our modern set. I'll just roll down through these quickly like this. There's some nice looks in here. Again, depending upon the mood that you're looking for. And then finally we have Vintage at the very bottom. And just a few more in here. That's a real nice one, Vintage 1. There's the original. Actually, this is, we're going back to that black and white. So let's reset that. 
We set the defaults. There we go. Back to our vintage again. And I think that vintage one is pretty nice, actually. That's pretty close to what I would do. Maybe we'll give it just a little bit more black on that, but that's pretty close. Let's click on the vintage one. I'll select that one. Let's now go up here where it says back. And once you've done that, you can come in here and adjust further at this point. You're not stuck with just that preset. You can use that as a beginning point and then add to it. I'll give it just a little bit more contrast in here. Maybe not. Maybe I'll come in and do a little bit more shadowing. There is a bit darker on that, a little bit more on the blacks, just a touch, and a bit more on the whites, just a little bit again, just adding a bit more contrast to it. And I think that looks pretty good. Again, this was a JPEG image. I'm not using a camera raw image, but we can edit JPEGs here inside of the camera raw editor. Once you're ready and you want to open this up over in Photoshop Elements to finish your work on it, come down here where it says open and you have two options. It raises up just a little bit like that, but easier to see. You have open and open as copy. Now I prefer to do open as copy because the camera raw editor will add a sidecar, which is an additional little side file onto your original image. and will put all those settings into the original. I like keeping the originals alone or untouched. So I always open it as a copy. And then I have my original that I can go back to if I want to do more editing later on. If you want to get more training for working with Photoshop elements, take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that in the description and I'll see you next time.